In 1905, following his paper on the special theory of relativity, Albert Einstein proposed what he called the Law of Equivalence of Mass and Energy, or Mass Energy Equivalence for short. From that paper came the most famous equation in all of physics, E equals mc squared. It describes the relationship between energy and mass. But what the heck does it actually mean? We're going to break it down, today on Tinyverse. Our universe began with a massive explosion. We call this the Big Bang. Energy raced outward in every direction. Heat and light spread as the boundaries of space itself expanded. In the chaotic energy of the early universe, there was no matter, nothing you could touch. Over the next 380,000 years, that energy cooled and atoms began to form, turning into gas clouds that would coalesce to form stars, planets, and eventually, us. The atoms that make up everything around us were born from the energy of the Big Bang. But what if I told you we can still harness that energy? You see, Einstein's mass energy equivalence tells us that mass and energy are two sides of the same coin. The energy from the Big Bang didn't go away, it just changed forms, becoming matter and everything we see around us. But it's possible to turn that matter back into energy. How much energy? Einstein's famous equation gives us the answer. So what do E, M, and C squared actually mean? E stands for energy. What is energy? It surrounds us, penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. And drives them rushing apart. It's described as the ability to do work or exert force. Usually we think of electrical energy, like when you plug in a lamp. The electrical energy from the wall goes into the bulb which produces light, radiant energy, and heat, thermal energy. But while energy may change forms, it cannot be created or destroyed. See, there are many types of energy, but it all falls into two categories, kinetic or potential. Kinetic energy is movement, physical force. This includes heat, because thermal energy is just the movement of atoms. But electricity and light are forms of potential energy as are gravity and magnetism. Potential energy is the force created by something's position in a field, like your proximity to a magnet, or to a planet's gravity. So now in our equation, energy is equal to m times c squared. So what's m? m stands for mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. The more matter it has, the heavier it is. We measure mass in kilograms, but unlike weight, mass is not affected by gravity. Although you might weigh more on Jupiter and less on the moon, your mass, or the amount of stuff that makes up you, stays the same. Almost everything has mass, even something as tiny as an atom. The periodic table lists all of the atoms from lightest to heaviest, and all of the stuff around us is made up of these atoms. Atoms, in turn, are all made of the same stuff. Neutrons, protons, and electrons. The lightest element, hydrogen, only has one proton and one electron. Whereas a heavier element, like uranium, has way more particles. So it's denser and has more mass. So now, to convert mass into energy, we multiply it by c squared. c refers to the speed of light, around 300,000 kilometers per second. That's fast enough to fly around the Earth seven times in one second. This is insanely fast. It's so fast that nothing can go any faster. It's the cosmic speed limit, as Einstein discovered in his special theory of relativity. So anyway, this number is huge. And c squared is c times c. That number is... Well, what's bigger than huge? Astronomical. I would have got there eventually. So now converting mass to energy using E equals mc squared, you have to multiply m by this ridiculous number. So let's fill in this equation. Let's see how much energy we can get from a one gram paperclip. We multiply it by the speed of light squared, which gives us almost 90 million megajoules. How much energy is that? That's enough thermal energy to boil Lake Tahoe, or enough kinetic energy to launch nearly two tons at over a million kilometers per hour. All that energy from just a single paperclip. Now, what about something with more mass? If we took one kilogram of mass, like say this cantaloupe, and turned it all into electrical energy, it'd be enough to power Ireland for a year. 
Or if Gambit turned a 96 gram deck of playing cards into pure kinetic energy. Look at a draw, mon cherie. You'd have an explosion over 130 times more powerful than the Hiroshima nuclear blast. But without mutant abilities, powering Ireland with a cantaloupe is a bit of a pipe dream. Today our most efficient means of converting mass into energy is through nuclear fission like in our nuclear reactors and bombs. With fission we split large atoms like uranium, breaking the strong nuclear force that holds them together. In the process we turn a tiny bit of that matter into a ton of kinetic energy. Nuclear fission produces up to 3 million times as much energy as burning coal or blowing stuff up with dynamite. Just use the ace of spades like we do on the bayou. But like energy, mass can't be destroyed. The amount of mass and energy always stays constant. We can turn matter into kinetic energy, which can spin turbines, generating electrical energy. We can use that electrical energy to power a lamp, giving off heat and light. But when you add it all up, the total mass and energy in the system stays constant. Nothing is lost and nothing is created. It just changes form. Energy is changing forms constantly, all around us. From the radiant energy of the sun, to the chemical energy in plants, to the comings and goings of the animals that eat those plants. The universe is a constant flow from one place to another. After the Big Bang, it took hundreds of thousands of years for atoms to form. As the lightest elements coalesced into stars, they ignited, giving off light and heat, turning mass back into energy, and kickstarting this whole energetic process we call life. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Probably. I mean, we can't be the first, right? Can we? I cannot teach him. We're back! Sorry, I, let's do it again. <laughs> That's right, I'm back. He's back. Just me. Okay, totally natural. One take, let's go. All right. Coming at you again with another video. Uh, so thanks for watching straight through to the end. I hope you guys like that one. We, we read all the comments that you guys left in our video and the outpour of support, and we really appreciate it. Uh, it's been very encouraging to read how our videos have helped you guys understand the universe. We saw our dog's video got up over a million views. So that's pretty exciting. If you haven't checked that out yet, Look at it. There might be a link. I'm pointing to a link, maybe. We're going to be starting to release more videos. Uh, they will take time for them to come out. Um, some of them around general relativity, special relativity, and other topics. But do leave some comments and, and suggestions of other videos you guys want to see. Hit us up. Keep bugging us. Uh, tell us to make more videos. And, you know, eventually we're going to do it. Yeah. Because we have no ability to resist peer pressure. Hit that notification button and you will get a notification of our next video. That's what it's for. But until next time, see y'all later. All right, stay curious.